All right, here's part three of our or of our test review. Um, this is all multiple, these are all multiple choice questions. The first one says the height f of x of a bouncing ball after x bounces is represented by f of x equals 80 times 25 to the x. How many times higher is the first bounce than the fourth bounce? Now, my suggestion here, and I'll tell you what the misconception was that I was helping people with yesterday, but first I would type that expression for f of x into my calculator y equals. So I'm going to look at the table. So I'm going to look at 80 times 0.5 to the x. Now when I look at the table here, these give me all the bounces. Now here's where the misconception was. A lot of people were using this starting value at zero as the first bounce. That's not the first bounce. That's the height that the bouncing ball started at, was 80 feet or whatever it is. It doesn't really say what feet it is. The first bounce is x equals 1. That's at 40. Okay, so the first bounce for x equals 1 gave me a y value of 40. The fourth bounce at x equals 4 is 5. That's the height. Well, how many times bigger is 40 than 5? That would be 8, which is A. So make sure you're understanding that 80 isn't the first bounce. That's where the ball starts from. Number 2, which equation describes the graph? Well, you should notice that that's a graph of exponential growth, so I need an exponential function. I can eliminate a because a x squared, you know that's the parent quadratic function, and d is not exponential, it's linear. Exponential has an x in the exponent, like e and t. Since the graph is exponential growth, I need a growth rate that's greater than 1, which would be option b. Um, number 3, we know that f of x is 100 times 0.5 to the x, and g is 2 to the x. What's g of f of 2? Some composition of functions here. Remember, we always start on the right, f of 2. So I'll put 2 in for x in the function of f, which would be 100 times 0.5 to the second. So you can use your calculator here. 100 times 0.5 squared, and f of 2 is 25. So now what we do when we get that output of 25, because remember that answer goes into the function on the left, which is g. So I'm going to find g of 25, which would be 2 to the 25th. So you can guess at this point which answer it is. 2 to the 25th should be kind of a big number. 3 million, 333 million, I guess that is. 33 million, 554,432. All right, number four, which of the following is the equivalent exponential form of the logarithm log base four of x equals two? This is using the definition of the logarithm. Remember, we used we call it the curly cube method. Go up and around. So you start at the base, four to the second power equals x. So that would be option A again. What's the value of x? Well, you just need to know four squared, which is 16. Right, number five, evaluate the log base 2 of 4 to the 5th. Now, imagine that this is set equal to x right here. We don't know what the value equals. Do the same thing that you did in number four. I'm going to do a definition of a log to rewrite this as 2 to what power gives me 4 to the 5th. And then you can simplify. Figure out what 4 to the 5th is. 4 to the 5th is 1,024. So I have 2 to the x equals 1,024. And if you don't know what power of x gives you 24, I mean, we can eliminate some. We know 2 to the 4th is 16. 2 to the 5th is 32. So it's either 7 or 10. So just check those in your calculator. 2 to the 7th is 128. 2 to the 10th is 1,024. So the answer is going to be here. All right, lastly, the inverse of an exponential, we talked about this a lot, it's really important, is called a logarithm. That's part two. All right, if you have questions on any of the multiple choice that are more in-depth, go ahead and ask your teacher.